This is the sound of refusing to give in. It's leaving nothing to chance. Searching relentlessly for the right, the only treatment option that will keep a heart beating. Fortunately, the Christ Hospital Health Network has groundbreaking treatment options unavailable anywhere else in the country, developed with help from our own physicians. That's what makes us Greater Cincinnati's Heart Hospital and one of the top heart hospitals in the world. The Christ Hospital Health Network, everything it takes. The Pound This Podcast is brought to you by the Christ Hospital Health Network. This is the Pound This Podcast, episode 825, The Secrets to Long-Term Wellness Success with Matt Casey. I want to lose weight, but I don't know how to get started. What should I meal prep every week? How do I get those sweet booty gains? Inspiration for your healthy lifestyle. The Pound This Podcast with Amanda Valentine. Hello, homies. Welcome to the Pound This Podcast. Before I get into this really great conversation with Matt Casey all about long-term success, which your girl is struggling with herself, (laughs) I want to tell you about some people that can help you find current success and long-term success, one of them being Sarah and Team Fit With Me, of teaching you all about macros, nutrition, helping you work through some of your issues, possibly with exercise, with hormonal issues, with gut issues. If you're like, dang, you know what? I've tried reaching my goals by myself and I am on the struggle bus, which, hey, I think we've all been there. You kind of need somebody to help you through it. And Sarah and her whole team is absolutely amazing. Lots of recipes, coaching, guidance will keep you on track. Have you do stuff that you might not do yourself, like track photos. <laughs> I'm so bad at that. And it's so incredibly helpful whenever you're, you have a goal in mind and you want to like see that progress from week to week. So if you're interested in coaching with Sarah, check her out. She will work with you specifically to what your goals are and specifically to your budget. So she's going to work with whatever's going to work best for you as an individual. So go to teamfitwithme.com, check out Sarah and get some guidance so you can reach your goals, whatever those goals may be. If you're in Cincinnati and you struggle with eating healthy or staying consistent, then definitely check out Clean Eats in Newport because that meal prep service Oh my gosh, it helps so freaking much. And there's no subscription, nothing like that. So there's no like obligations to anything. You can just pop in, pick up some frozen meals if you want, grab some food at the cafe and pop on out. Or you can do the weekly meal plan. That's what I usually do. I do 21 meals a week, which just kind of mostly takes care of everything. So there is no thinking. And all their macros, all of the um, calories are included on every meal. You can break it out to figure it out what is best for you, whatever your goals are, whether you're tracking stuff or you're not, or you just hate cooking and you want somebody else to cook for you and give you a lot of variety. Um, Clean Eats in Newport will do absolutely all those things for you. So check them out. And if um, you're looking for some discounts, send me a personal email, amanda at amandavalentinebites.com or hit me up on Instagram at you can pound this and definitely found, follow Clean Eats Newport on Instagram as well because they'll post all of their deals, all of the meals. You can see pictures. You can see what the food looks like every week. It's super helpful. Right now, speaking of food and exercise and coaching and goals, let's chat with Matt. Thank you so much for listening to the Pound This Podcast. I am Amanda Valentine, returning guest. Many like guest appearances now at this point over the past, what has it been? Maybe like a year and a half now? Um, Probably. Oh my God, we had an anniversary oh. and we didn't even celebrate. <laughs> we need to go to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Is Matt Casey from Trilogy Fitness Systems? How are you today, Matt? Good, Amanda. How are you today? I'm good. So I wanted to. I know, like, we're going to talk about like fad diets, fad workouts, long term success. And um, it's so funny because I was just at Trilogy this morning working out and I was thinking about this. Um, Also, full disclosure, at the time of recording, I'm going to go on a date this afternoon. And so, oh my goodness. (laughs) Um, But I'm thinking about these things as the last definitely year I have struggled with a lot of big life changes of divorce, job changes, moving all sorts of stuff. And I think that a lot of that has really changed my own health and fitness of really having a new perspective on things and trying to let go of old things and being like going into emotional eating and old habits, but also being like, this is what I need to do to take care of myself. And how am I taking care of myself moving forward? And so going into a situation for me of going on a date, which I don't do a ton of at all, of 
trying to get out of the mindset of the thought of this person will judge me based on what my body looks like. Um, and so I was just kind of thinking of that where I'm like, you know what, like, why am I focused? Why am I thinking about the size of my body or what my body looks like? Because I'm like, I'm a strong, bad bitch. And like, I was just thinking this as I was doing sled pushes at Trilogy this morning, I was like, it's not about, I did, I've done fad diets. I did a decade of fad diets, Mm -hmm. but this has been since 2012. So it's been 11 years of my health and fitness journey. And I'm like, and I am still here pushing a sled at 7 a.m. on a Saturday. I'm like, this is a lifestyle. This is because I love this. I'm not doing this because I hate my body and I'm trying to be skinnier. I'm not doing this because I have, I'm going to go meet somebody this afternoon and I feel like a workout will make me look a certain way. I'm here because I, I want this lifestyle. I'm in fighting for this. I I want to be strong. I want to get into consistency. I want to get back into rhythms. I'm doing this because I love myself. And I'm like, that's the story here. It's not like I'm here at the gym because I want to like lose so much weight. Once I hit that goal, now I don't come here anymore. I'm like, this is 11 years of still like showing up for myself in ways that feel good. And so like for me, the, that moment for me this morning, and I didn't mean to go off on a whole tangent here to kick this thing off, but that was just like, okay, well I can show up to meet a new person and be like, this is the kind of person I am. If you want to know a clear picture of who I am, I am a person that like, obviously this is my lifestyle. I'm really passionate about it. And even through the toughest times, I'm still going to show up for myself and find a new way to like make a new routine because this is super important to me. End of rant. (laughs) It's well, you email, I think we're either texting or emailing about it a couple weeks ago where you said you're feeling all those things, like all the like, I mean, life is chaos sometimes. And yeah. you just went through chaos of divorce, job, all the things at once, moving, everything. And you're like, you kind of vented in the email of like all of that, yeah. right? And you're like, I need help setting goals with stuff like that. Like, what can I do? And you threw like a few things out there. And like, I just narrowed in on the one of them. I was like, well, what about like, just like trying to get nine workouts in the next month? Yeah. Right. Like it wasn't, it was a far lower bar than what you had set in the emails. Mm-hmm. But I knew also at the same time, it like that focuses on just the act of doing again, yeah. the act of actually showing up for yourself. So it gets out of that kind of spiral set. Yeah. And we're constantly battling these inputs and outputs all the time, whether we're scrolling on Instagram or we're listening to whatever pops up about, you know, Hey, here's this new trendy thing. Do this in 30 days. So like we have these inputs coming at us all the time. So we have to battle it with what really works and what really creates sustainability. Mm -hmm. So that was really helpful because then what I did from that conversation and through another really tough, and I think that kind of got brewed up of a really tough conversation Mm -hmm. that I had that I will not get into, um, that um, I have a, a chalkboard that, I had from my old house that I wasn't really using. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to create myself like my own little board here of goals for the month of July. And one of them, I put 10 little boxes, trilogy workouts. I want to do 10 trilogy workouts in July. I'm going to give myself a little check box. My other one was I went without watching TV for like two years or not watching much TV. And I felt like just a lot better. And then over the past several months, I got into the habit of watching TV every single night. And to me, sitting down and watching TV, whether I'm hungry or not, means eat, eating. Mm-hmm. So then I was getting into this, I'm like binging every night and I'm eating every night because to relax, I'm watching TV. And also in my brain, I equate sitting down watching TV with eating. Like I can't, I, I want to sit, if I'm watching TV, I want to eat. And so I'm like, that's problematic for multiple reasons that I'm wasting, like in my opinion, four to five hours every night of just binge watching sex in the city and eating Mm -hmm. chips when I'm like, if I just turn the TV off, I know I'll stop this behavior. And so I gave myself the goal of also not watching TV again, which is incredibly helpful. So now like just by taking the TV out, I am no longer just sitting there mindlessly eating because I took the TV out of the equation. So like those things have helped me a ton over the past few weeks. Um, and again, it's just like one of those things where I think it is, it's like 
not saying I'm going to do that every single month, but it's like also just knowing myself of like, how do I build a more consistent routine and how do I create these small goals, whether it's a weekly goal or a monthly goal for myself to kind of get me in the mindset and the reset to move me forward. Um, so at least that's been helpful for me anyway. Well, it's, those are good things too. And like, I don't know if you even realize it about like the habit chain stuff, but like, that's actually like you're building awareness, which is something that I've been writing about a lot in the trilogy emails recently is like, that's the one step I think everybody tends to skip over. Yeah. They don't have a true awareness of where they are, what their skill sets are. And they don't have an awareness of what like their triggers and hurdles are. So they just assume like, Oh, I can't, I can't make a gym. Around. I don't know what's going on. You're like, well, take a step back, look at your week and let's, look at it and we can kind of find some hurdles or I, I can't stop doing these things. There's going to be triggers that we associate with these things with. So like the fact that you're able to take a step back, use that awareness to kind of find some of those hurdles and triggers. Now on the goal setting side, you actually made process oriented goals, which is what kind of people need to focus on. Everybody wants to make this outcome goal of, you know, I'm going to do a thing or I'm going to lose 10 pounds or I'm going to run a race whatever their goal may be. They just kind of have this broad outcome-based goal and they don't think about the process at all. And the process is, unfortunately for most things, whether it's work or health and fitness, it's a lot of mundane repetition. Yeah. And showing up for yourself in those process-based goals. Well, so like I, things you can track and actively do is what you did. Well, and I think also understanding that those things are always going to be in flux and change. Like I was just saying, like I've been doing this for 11 years now and I hit rough patches and struggle points. And it's like, just because I had it figured out one point doesn't mean it's figured out forever. And so yeah, it's like, changes. you're going to have to start from the bottom again, or not even from the bottom. You're coming from a, I'm coming from such a learning space. So it's like, I'm not anywhere near where I began, but it's also, it's like, it doesn't mean that it's not going to be struggling and you're going to have to make hard, you're going to consistently always have to make habit changes. I think for the rest of your life, because Literally always. yeah, as things are linked, you're going to change jobs or you're going to have kids or you're going to have a pet death or you're going to have something happen. That's going to rock you out of what you're doing. And then you either have to go back to what you're doing before or find a new way. And I think that's what um, has been a struggle for me is I've been, and again, being self-aware of, of moving forward, of being like, I have to stop looking backwards. Like, this way of working out worked for me before. Like, I loved lifting six days a week. That's probably too much, girl, stop. And so, like, I, I kept looking back of, like, what's worked for me before and then trying to force myself into doing what worked for me before and it's just not working and I just keep failing and I'm like, well, because I'm not moving forward from this moment, like this version of Amanda right now, here today, how does this Amanda function in the present and want to move forward versus what it's worked for me in the past? And I think that was there, has it been a struggle for me because I think so much of my journey, like the past was just like such a shit show that like everything moving forward is progress. Mm -hmm. And there was no like looking back on this, like I used to be an athlete in high school. How do I get back there? Like there was none of that. And so, but now that I have been like the fittest version of myself in the past, now I keep looking back to that fittest version, but life was so incredibly different in that mm -hmm. one capture moment that like I, I can't move forward from there. And I was just having a conversation with a friend who's going some, through some other really rough life stuff right now. And she is struggling with sticking with healthy food decisions and exercise routines. And I was just like, Hey, do you know what I've like learned in the, like through having this conversation is helping me learn it that whenever life was going smoothly, then I'm like, Oh, counting macros and doing all this stuff. I love it. Easy peasy. But when life is like being really hard for a minute, I'm like, that stuff stresses me out even more and is not helpful. So I'm like, my advice, you do what you need to do is like when life is real hard, like perhaps not try to put more like math equations into, mm -hmm. into it and just, and just be, <laughs> and then you can be this more hardcore version of a healthier self whenever that can be the elevated. Life allows it to. Yeah. Like you have to have every diet, every trick and tool and workout and all those things. It's just a tool in the toolbox. So it's like, if yeah, life is easy and slower, 
counting everything, weighing everything, that's going to be easier at that time. If you have a, you know, we've got several pregnant people at the gym right now. When they, those first several months in particular, their schedule is going to be fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> like it's yeah. not, this is not going to be there for them. So like if you then add in all these other stresses, like good luck, but you can still use the same principles. Like I know Helen, right? She's about to leave the gym for a few months on maternity leave. She's not going to be just flying off the rails and like all the, all my fitness things are gone because I have a baby right now. She'll find ways to adjust. Yeah, She has other tools in her toolbox that she can utilize. And then the mindset side of it is if she weighs and measures things right now, she probably won't be doing that, but she'll ballpark it and she'll be able to look at it and she'll be focusing on, because it's Helen, like she's going to make every plate veggie forward and protein forward and then fill in with the rest of it. Probably ballpark portions, do all those things. She'll get her activity back whenever she can after she gets cleared from PT and everything. But like her focus is going to shift where it's not going to be, oh, I was doing this three years ago. Well, it's a different life space, it's a different person right now. It's all of this changes. Yeah. And we have to be able to evolve at the same time while maintaining certain principles. And that's how we can keep it long term. Yeah. Because like with we were, I know we kind of mentioned fad diets earlier. Like when I was 24, I tried intermittent fasting and it worked great. Because I was finishing up grad school. I was working at three different gyms. So I was constantly going and doing things, interning, working class, where yeah, I could go 10 hours out eating because I was just constantly going have a few meals like, oh my God, intermittent fasting is magic. It's great. Now at 36 with a far different schedule, that doesn't work for me. I can't, like I get very hungry. I notice a hunger and then I tend to binge afterwards. Yeah. So like I don't mess with it anymore. Yeah. But it's a tool in a toolbox in case it comes back for me later. Yeah. I mean, I think it, again, like it gets so hard if like you've done intermittent fasting um, or also a coworker of mine who's done keto in the past and it was really mm -hmm. successful and now trying to like shove that again and it's not working for them. Like, well, it worked in that moment, but just because mm -hmm. you did this one thing and it worked for you in the past does not mean it's like we're aging every single day, not to be like a bummer, but like our body chemistry is literally changing on a day to day yes. basis as we like age <laughs> and everything else. So it's like, I have the same expectation that because keto helped you lose 60 pounds two years ago, that keto is going to help you do that now, two years later. And it, if you're trying to force something that's not working, then you're like miserable. Like mm -hmm. that there's the, your body is telling you something that maybe this isn't it. And maybe you should try something else. That doesn't mean keto does or does not work. It just is not for you right now. Oh yeah. The principles will always stay the same, but the methods and the ways we get to those principles will change. And that's the hard part for people to realize is because there is so much information. We're constantly those inputs and outputs again. Like we're constantly bombarded with fad this, fad this, fad this. Here's a new one. Here's a new one. Here's a new one. This will. This is a magic fix. This is the key for you right now. But it's not. It's just like you have to understand the principles and you have to give yourself some grace and some balance in your life at the same time. Yeah. Because that's what's hard. It's like. We're a bunch, as my buddy Max says, we're a bunch of nerds hurtling towards 40 in my friend group. <laughs> so we're like, we're just doing the best that we can, just <laughs> adjusting and evolving as our lives change. Yeah. Well, as a nerd in my 40s, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, it's like so true. And I think that, I think, uh, especially for me, I'm just in generally impatient person, which I'm, I've worked on. I've gotten a lot better at, but I feel like, especially now we're just in such an instant gratification culture of, I want this weird, strange thing and I can go on Amazon and literally have it tomorrow or mm -hmm. so used to this. So we want that same sort of thing of like, I want to feel better in my body. I want to look this certain way. I want to be this strong. I want to be able to do this thing and we want it right now. And that's just like, not how we were built to work. And so these fad things kind of give you the promise and sometimes the deliverable 
of, mm-hmm. yeah, if you're going to eat like 900 calories a day, um, you will lose weight. You yeah. will de- definitely that first fun. month. You're not going to do it for a while, but no. you will drop that. And it's going to stop too. So like that first mm-hmm. month, you're going to crush and you're going to think that you lose all this weight, but then it's going to stop. And then you're going to go back to eating like a normal person like you should. And then you're going to gain it back. And uh, I've been through that phase plenty of times that I can definitely speak to that, that it's like, yes, you got that instant gratification, but only for that instance. And then most of the time it comes back worse than you were, you already were. And then you're so discouraged. I'm going to been there that you're just like, then it's even harder to make healthier, sustainable choices because you feel so burned Mm -hmm. on going through this other thing that quote unquote worked and then didn't. Yeah. That's where it's, I don't know. It's really frustrating because we have that constant battle in our head all the time. And then we're our own worst enemies with at the same time because we just compare and compare and compare. And it makes it really, really impossible to kind of move forward unless we have, again, that awareness piece of it yeah. that we can move forward with it. I think uh, also where I'm all, where I'm at right now is because I'm trying to do things in a different way. Again, the more you know, the difference that you act. Of not only have I lost over 120 pounds in, in my past, um, and then I became a personal trainer and a nutritionist and armed with all this information. This podcast, I have over 800 episodes of talking to so many incredibly intelligent people in all of health and wellness spaces. Of uh, and then I'm struggling myself of <laughs> just showing you like, again, like nobody has all the answers to anything that this time moving forward, um, I am, I am not getting on a scale. Um, I'm not weighing and measuring things right now and not because those things are bad or not because I won't use those tools again, but it's also just where I think it's also being honest with where you're at. And there's mm-hmm. part of me that wants to be like, Ooh, I'm feeling better. I wish I had that number on the scale to like validate Mm -hmm. my, uh, my progress, quote unquote, to like, tell me what I need the number to define my progress. And I'm like, that's such a hard loop to get out of, of being like, I'm going to measure my inches or my pant size or the number on the scale as a measure of success. Um, but when, and we've taught, and like, you can talk about it and you can hear it all day of like, measure your success by your amount of sleep and your amount of Mm -hmm. energy. And you're less like, yeah, I get it. But at the same time you want that, like, tell me I've lost 50 pounds. Yeah. Um, so that's where I even feel like just in the past few weeks of doing just healthier things for myself while still being balanced, while still like, I'm not denying myself of like milkshakes or had Holman's donuts last night in the event. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's these things where in the past I would have limited myself to because I'm like, I'm trying to be healthier. You can't have those. Mm -hmm. But a goal for mine was I just want to feel more comfortable in my clothes. I want to feel more comfortable in my body. I do want to have the more energy. Um, And so I feel like already in the past few weeks, my pants feel much more comfortable. And my knee jerk reaction is like, hop on the scale, see what it says. And I'm like, no, Yeah. (laughs) like, this is what you wanted. You're achieving the goal. Like, why do you need the number to tell you that you did it? Like, knock it off. It's so hard to like repave those paths. Yeah. And then it's funny. Like we were talking with the people who react to different posts on Instagram and you'll see comments, people yell about stuff. Like there's some people who, yeah, we try to tell them like, you should not be near a scale right now yeah like this for the phase that you're in the goals the things we want to work on like that's not what you need to do there's other people and there's gonna be these times where you're like yeah weigh in every day it's a data point that's all it is and for the right mentality the right phase the right person all the things work and that's what makes it so hard is because we all think because of like the diet culture side of it that we've been told jump on a scale be less, get those, get those inches down. Yeah. It's the only way we can measure progress is to get those inches down. Like it's, we hear it every day. So like, of course, it's going to be in the back of our brain every time. And that battle doesn't stop. Yeah. And there might be a time you're we like, all right, I'm going to measure this again. Cause I'm in a good space right now. I can do this. And I want to make a concerted effort towards some fat loss. And that's a okay. The pendulum has swung really far where people are like, that should never be a goal for people. Like, well, it, could be yeah and if they're in the right spot it is perfectly fine goal and there's other people on the same side who like that should not be their goal their goal should be like 
I want to eat a cookie and not have a breakdown with this. And like, that should be something that they work with a therapist for to do all these things to like get in the space where they can have this balance again. Because again, we're going to be in different phases of life every day. Yeah. And there's just different seasons. Like you're just, you can't stay the same. You can't redline it all the time. Yeah. And I think that is what's so frustrating. Um, I mean, because this is not only social media, this is people in your personal life. I think anybody that has a strong opinion about what you should or should not do, you should also just immediately throw out that opinion (laughs) of like somebody telling you like, this is the right way to live or the wrong way to live. I feel like in any capacity of of just anything of, uh, doesn't have to be held in like, God, like, how do you know me? You know what I mean? Like, how do you know what's best? I'm trying to figure out what's best for me. How do you stranger know Mm -hmm. that like uh, intermittent fasting is the absolute answer and everybody, like anybody that's like puts it in such black and white. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Of like that puts it in such black and white terms. Like I think immediately red flag of somebody that tells you this is good. This is bad. Do this. Don't do this. Um, and that's what I felt like I struggled with. Again, this is my own internal thoughts of being when when I was doing like health coaching and stuff like that and trying to help other people. I felt some people were trying to like pull that out of me, like tell me what's good, tell me what's bad, tell me what to do, tell me what not to do. And I'm like, I don't want to tell you what to do. Like I'm here to like I want to give guidance and I want to be a supportive ear. But there's no part of me that wants to tell Mm -hmm. any human what they should and should not do because I don't know. I'm not living your life. I'm not in your body. I'm not in your brain. Like it it might be totally awesome for you to go do whatever you're feeling right now. Like, I don't know. And so then then in my head, I'm like, oh, I'm like the shittiest coach ever. I'm a terrible personal trainer because I don't know what to tell this person to do and what not to do because I think... Again, the cultural narrative is you're used to people being like, oh, they know what they're doing because they're telling me what to do and mm-hmm. what not to do. So like it's again, like it, it's all so confusing. Like that's why I feel like I can do so many episodes of this podcast because we're all trying to figure it out because it's a hot mess. <laughs> it is a hot it is a hot mess. And like with coaching, it's like I didn't like tell you. Like it was in, if we would have sat down in the office and when we set some of those goals for like the workout thing, mm-hmm. I would have just asked you questions and had you kind of come to those conclusions on your own. I wouldn't have prescribed you to do certain things. Yeah. It's like, we're just going to like, I'm going to give you some guardrails. We're just going to talk. I'm going to help guide you towards a train of thought. And we're like, all right, we're going to, you settle on this. Let's try this. Yeah. Let's see if it works. Let's go with that. Because we touched on the awareness. People lack awareness. People are obsessed with the instant gratification, which is what those like 30 day cleanse is going to promise. Right. And then the other thing that kind of like, as a trainer, I was t- that kind of popped in my brain. We were talking earlier. One of the things that kind of bothers me, people are like, Oh, I just want to turn my brain off, turn my brain yeah. off. I don't want to think about all this stuff. I'm like, you, you can't have to, you can't. It is a very fitness. Notice is a very active thing. You have to kind of, be aware of how your body feels in the moment. You had to be aware of like, all right, I can push myself hard in the gym today or be aware of I slept terrible and I played, you know, pickleball yesterday for a couple hours and I did these things and my dog tripped me. So like, I probably shouldn't push it really hard today. I need to dial it back. So like you have to constantly kind of be in tune with yourself. Yeah. And people don't like that. No, it's hard. It's hard. We, we don't like to think about where we are in an honest state. And we like to be prescribed and told, and I want something now because I can Amazon Prime this thing or I can stream this on my things. Why am I going to a movie theater? Why am I going to watch Tom Cruise jump off of a cliff on a motorcycle if I can wait for three months and just watch it on Netflix? Like that's everybody wants the immediate kind of easy thing. Yeah. And all of these things, whether we're somebody who's, tracking things and weighing every day or somebody who's practicing intuitive eating stuff or somebody who's trying to kind of regain some balance and some control in their nutrition and their fitness. Like it's really hard work and each phase of those things is really hard. Yeah. And we have to know kind of where we are and that that's the hardest part about it. Well, I think that not only, um, I will say this for me where this is again, like a proud thing of for, for me where I'm at now where it's not this like, body goal or anything. Um, but it's something that's a big marker of progress for me is not only being aware of yourself, but then able to speak that out loud, um, and understand and be able to, um, 
know your own limits and boundaries without having to constantly be like, well, I ain't no baby. I'll do, I'll mm-hmm. push through anything. And so I feel like for me, um, having been a personal trainer and a coach, um, I think one of the biggest learning lessons for that is like a greater understanding of my own boundaries of like, okay, so I'm like, I have this armed with this knowledge now. And I'm, uh, I'm also knowledgeable in my own body of like with my janky knees and some hip issues and stuff like that, that in the past having going to like hit classes or whatever of knowing something will put me in pain, but pushing past it anyway. Mm -hmm. But now having more knowledge, which I will tell all of your trainers and I have where I'm like, I'm not being a burden. I'm not being a little baby bitch that doesn't want to work. Like all these narratives you're telling in your head of like, I don't need to do any modifications of speaking up and being like, I just had this yesterday with Helen where she's like, we're going to do reverse lunges. And I'm like, those don't work for me. And I'm like, I can do split squats. And like also just knowing in my head of like, okay, I know what I can do and what Mm -hmm. my body is able of. I'm like, I'm not trying to do this because I'm trying to skirt the work. I get past that narrative and be like, no, these, whenever I do this, I I step backwards. And I told her, I'm like, the first set I'll do fine. The second set I'll get tired and my head will disassociate and I won't think of good foot placement and I'll put my foot back and I'll throw my knee out. Like, Mm -hmm. I know myself, I know that's what will happen. So just to avoid that. (laughs) And I'm going to go on a limb and say that Helen screamed at you and told you, suck it up, do it anyway. (laughs) No, and like, well, that's uh, what, what's awesome. And I said that today too, I, I worked out with Halen and I was like, Hey, listen, last night I was carrying some really heavy table tables in an awkward position. It kind of like made my back kind of funky in an area I've had sciatica in the past. I'm like, it's not super bad, but I want to make you aware that mm-hmm. like, I feel some tightness and some tension here. And he's like, okay, well let's do some 90 nineties. And like, let's, let's, let's do some mobility drills to kind of like loosen that up. So I'm like, it's not that I'm saying that like in my, in the past, in my head of like, don't let somebody know that you're weak. Don't like, you're being a complainer. You're like, you're, you know, and I'm like, no, I'm speaking up for myself. I'm knowledgeable in my yeah. own body. I'm, I know when I've triggered things and I'm not going to push it past a yellow light anymore. So I think for me, that's a proud point of being, again, like of understanding my body a little bit more and being able to verbalize that to a person that I am mm-hmm. paying to help me, <laughs> yeah. to have that's... them actually like help me in the moment instead of thinking in their head, which now being a personal trainer in the past, I'm like, I know, like if somebody said that to me, it wouldn't in my head, I wouldn't be like, this person sucks. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'd be like, oh no, let's do this instead. I'm being helpful of like understanding that's the process I feel like has helped me move me forward in so many helpful ways than this old way of thinking that I've been in, in the past. That's exactly why every time everybody comes into the gym, everybody, every, before every workout, somebody has probably, or at least should have asked you, how's your body feeling today? Yeah. To some variation, because we want you to know, we want to know, so we can make those tweaks and adjustments we want you to be able to kind of develop that awareness where it's just like a lot of like this little subtle, like, I want you to think about how this feels. I mm-hmm. want you to become aware. Like we're trying to slowly coach that into people without them realizing at the same time, because that's like the not fun part about fitness and training and stuff like that of like, there's no reason to redline it all the time. Yeah. And then there's other people at the same time who like, They should probably realize like they're what they perceive in their brain as like a nine out of 10 effort is really like a five. Mm, And -hmm. like you're capable of doing a little bit more. And there's other people that we're trying to kind of get them to like step back of like, hey, but you're not like if your knee and your hip, like we're not recovering well. We need to dial it back. So we're trying to like just slowly coach this awareness up so people develop a better relationship with all this stuff. Yeah. But I think that. I mean, I don't want us to put generalizations, but I would say a lot of general fitness locations don't have that mindset. I think if you're going to a personal trainer, um, depending on the trainer, um, you're mm-hmm. paying for that kind of like personalized knowledge. But if you're just kind of going to some of these like boot campy sort of places like that, that's it's just like, no, this is the pre prescribed workout for the day. Here it is. Here's some minor modifications, but we're going to not really watch you or coach you through it or tell you if you need it or not. So go hit it hard. And like I know so many people, including myself in the past, 
that have done, and they feel so good because they have like it's such a dopamine hit to do these really intense boot camp classes. Not saying that they're bad. I still enjoy doing them, just not all the time. That you just do it and you're like, I love it. Now I'm obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. And now you go five days a week until something happens and you break and then you just don't go for two years. And then you beat yourself up of like, I used to be so healthy and I used to be so into it. And how come I'm not into it anymore? I'm such a piece of trash. And then you go into this cycle, which is so much like, like throwing you so far behind more. So if you just would have been like, just so much slower in the process and mm -hmm. intentional instead of like, I got to beat the shit out of my body and I got to sweat through my shirt and like, quote unquote, earn my shower sort of thing. But I almost kind of feel like you can tell me if you disagree or not. Um, again, spoken from personal experience and through people that I know and have interviewed on this podcast, I almost feel like you can preach that all day and nobody will really hear it until they've lived it. They, it yeah, feels like once you've gone through those things and then, then you get it, but like, you can't you can tell somebody that all day and they'll just ignore you until they actually live it and then they'll be like oh i see what you're saying now <laughs> my bad oh, yeah <laughs> like, when you look at like high athlete training like in grad school that's what i worked with, with like division one college and all that kind of stuff so like it was working with high level athletes they recover between sets they have very time things like they're not just sprinting on a treadmill for as long as they can, then jumping on a road, then doing all these other things just for minutes at a time with the 10 second break. Like that doesn't really train any physical quality. Like we're getting really nerdy in the exercise science side of this right now, yeah. but like it doesn't train any physical qualities. The physical qualities that we typically need, particularly as we start to get older, I mean, our muscle and power and everything decrease after the age of 35 by about 10% every decade. Awesome. Like our goals need to be, let's maintain and build muscle. Let's maintain some power. Let's maintain our strength levels so that we can continue to live a fulfilling life. Like those, those type of classes, they are, I could, like my skill set is not a rah, rah, let's go do this kind of stuff. I would jump out of a window if I had to do those classes. <laughs> it's not my skill set. And that's not what I like about the fitness side. But we can, it's, you have to teach these people to take a step back. Like you said, that slower approach is really hard. That's the things that people need, but those aren't the things that are cool, catchy, cool marketing behind it. Like, hey, we're going to train a similar variation of a deadlift for eight weeks in a row. So we can really get strong and train this hinge and your hamstrings and glutes are going to look great. Your back's going to feel fantastic. And you're going to be really strong on this thing. But you got to do this thing for like eight weeks in a row. People will be like, I'm bored after like three of these. <laughs> no, thank you. And then they're going to turn 45 and they'll be like, why does my back and my knee hurt? I'm like, well, we never learned how to hinge and you don't have any muscle there. Yeah. And then they are starting this over there. But like people will live it. People will hear me say this. Exercise science will tell you to rest a couple minutes between your sets. Do these things. Do all this stuff. And you don't need to do near the amount of intensity and volume that they're doing. And it's going to go in one year, out the other. And then they will come into places like Trilogy. My friend Anna has a place over in Walnut Hills. Like, they're going to come into places like us and be kind of broken down at that point. And then they're going to kind of, oh, man, we hear it all the time. I wish I would have been doing this when I was 25. I wish I would have been doing this when I was 30. Like, it's cool that you're doing it now. You'll be fine. You're still do stuff. But, like, you have to kind of weirdly live it at the same time because yeah. nobody believes it until you've experienced it. Exactly. And that's the stupid part about human <laughs> humans. Like we're really dumb. We're like, oh, this terrible thing on the news. Ah, it's not good. Batter hits me. Oh my God, this thing is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> we should change something. I will have to say on aging though, it's so, again, like finding a form of fitness that you love. Like for me, it's hiking. Like I, I've mm -hmm. always lived, like I lost a lot of weight from just walking outside. Um, as I actually had lost the majority of my weight, it was just like walking and running outside, which I really uh, love and enjoy. And obviously Same. I work at the nature center now, so I get to be outside and hike. But what's incredible for me, I don't know what these people are doing outside of the nature center, but these people are obviously coming to the nature center often to walk or hike or trails. Mm -hmm. And these people like we, I did not know there was like so many 90 year olds in like Cincinnati that are like coming out there every day to walk. And these mm -hmm. people 
like I would never know. They look so like young and vibrant. And like even last night I was talking to this couple at an event I was at at the nature center and I'm like, I don't, wouldn't even have thought of an age group. And then they're like, oh, you'll understand when you're in your 60s. I'm like, you guys are in your 60s? And I'm like, yeah, what? Like, I'm like, how much it just like makes a difference just to like move your body in healthy ways. Like, I don't think these people are going to like boot camp classes every day. No. But like just to see this like older population that looks like, again, like so much energy and vibrant and happy people by just going for some walks. <laughs> You've seen my seven o'clock group that I train on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays in the gym, right? The older people that I train over on the turf. Have you been there f- during them at all? Um, a little bit. They're in Monday, Wednesday, Friday, seven. There's a group of like five or six of them, depending on the day. They're now all in their early to mid seventies. I started training them when they were in their early sixties and like, they're still crushing it. They're going on. Two of them are, I think 72 and 74. Just did a bike trip through Switzerland. Whoa, cool. And you're kind of like, yeah, they've, for a long time, they've walked every day and they've strength trained two to three times a week. They walk every day and then they do some biking and some tennis and some things, but they use the fitness piece as a way to do the things that they love to do. Yeah. They love to hike. They love to travel, love to do these things. They realize that like, being strong, staying mobile, being able to train through these things of when your back gets flared up, like learning how to move with those things Mm -hmm. is really important. And it's, that's the secret. It's like walk every day, lift a couple of times a week and then sprinkling some stuff that you really enjoy doing and you're going to be fine. Yeah. So you just solved the whole problem right there. And I mean, that's, I mean, that's the best example. If we're talking about the like long-term success, Mm-hmm. that these people that are in their 70s, 80s, 90s, that are still like thriving and doing exactly what they want to do, that's what they're doing. Then why not they model ourselves after what they're themselves. doing? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I've talked to you before. Like I hired a coach that does my stuff right now. I'm on a fat loss phase for a few months now. And like, it's been the same thing. It's finding ways to control portions when I go out to eat because I'm not going to not do that. I'm not going to be like the cliche meathead that only eats chicken and broccoli. Like I'm still, we went to Fireside Pizza last night down in Walnut Hills. Like I'm still going to do these things. I had a delightful meal and my weight's going to be continuing to go down because I have the tools in there. Yeah. But it's literally just been lift and walk. And now we're going to start sprinkling some cardio because I jogged for like three minutes the other day and I felt like I was going to (laughs) die. So I was like, oh, I need to get back into some more cardio shape because there's going to be times when you've noticed these things. And then I'm going to go into a phase. I'm like, all right, I'm going to try to improve this capacity for me right now. Because you can't do everything at once. Yeah. So I'm going to focus my efforts on different things at different times. We can't do everything all at once. And that's the biggest, I think, mistake that people make in fitness. They try to do too much. They don't play the long game for sustainability. And they don't realize that you can't train every quality all at once. Yeah. You're a little bit stronger. You got to do this thing. If you want to build some muscle, you got to do this way. If you train for longevity. We got to do this thing. There's different paths and we can take those paths at different times. Yeah. Well, if you're in Cincinnati, I highly recommend going to Trilogy. And we're pretty fun. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I love that. Like now that I've kind of like, you know, settling into my, my new chapter uh, of life of, living in a different part of town and having a different job and doing what I'm doing now of like in going to trilogy now, which we had a discussion where I came in a few months ago of like, Hey, this is where I, I'm, I'm ready for consistency. I'm ready to mm-hmm. join the gym. Like, let's go. Like it just feels uh, really good for me. And I, I mean, I love coming into trilogy. There's no part of me. There's been in the past, like where you go, you're like, Oh, I have to go to the gym. Like, Ugh, I'm going to get my ass kicked and in, in a bad way. Like Mm -hmm. I don't like every time I'm excited, every time of just like, it's hard, but it's not so hard that I'm like, oh my God, I'm crushed. Like I just leave feeling really good. Everybody is so positive and so friendly. And again, every single trainer there is just like, will listen and help you exactly where you're at in that moment. And like, again, like it's just, it's such a positive place to be and to to reach your goals and it's just fun. It's like, it's, it's everything 
it's all of the things. So that's where I'm like, I'm not just saying this because we're friends and you're on my podcast right now, but like, it's, I was thinking this too, like this morning when I was working, I'm like, this is exactly where I need to be. Like, this is the, this is the space. This is the vibe. Like, this is where, this is really, really helpful to where I'm at in my life and where I'm looking forward to going in the future. Um, so I'm really happy to be there. And that's why I would really recommend anybody that is in the Cincinnati area that is able to come to your gym too. Cause like, what's your, do, has it changed? Like what's your policy for like newbies? Do they get like some free sessions and stuff like that? Or how's that work? We do a, if they're referrals from you, we do a free workout for people. We oh have like my. a low bear offer. If it's like three sessions for $39, just let people see if we're the right fit for them. But if somebody comes just, in because of me, they get their first session for free. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Can, can I put that on Instagram? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. That's where you can see I'm a very good businessman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like nobody knows any of my goddamn policies. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay so then it's and then we're doing other things people are like where's this i was like oh i thought i told her about this it's in emails and stuff i'm like oh oh yeah, yeah i didn't fault. oh if i knew there was a free cabin giveaway i'm like holy crap like because that's what i only noticed it yesterday because helen's like well you get a point for doing this and i'm like what point and then i asked Halen, i'm like are you guys keeping track of me like some point thing that i don't know about and he's like what are you talking about i don't know what are you guys talking about <laughs> <laughs> We sent the email out on Wednesday. We're like, hey, we're doing this contest for like consistency in the summer where it's like you get raffle entries for like, you know, you read for 10 minutes every day. So you drink a lot of water. Do you do a little cardio finishing in your workouts? Like we have point based for all the things. And then at the end, we're doing a raffle for like uh, $500 towards a weekend getaway. A couple of our members own a few cabins in like uh, the Smoky Mountain National Park. Oh, oh, dude, I want that so bad. Yeah. So we're like, that'll cover the $500 should cover like basically two and a half nights there cool so like, oh see i want to win it that should cover the whole thing and i will say this is not yeah. a you thing or a trilogy thing but i don't know if this is just me but i like i have newsletter fatigue so i i don't and it just sucks because i have so many friends that own businesses and i just delete all of your emails including the nature yeah. center but uh and i've made this said this too i'm like you you put out so many newsletters that mean different things and i don't even know what they mean and and i work here and i just feel like fatigued from it so i just delete them all rather than even open one of them i'm like sorry i'm yeah, like am i am i a bad friend because i'm like i just can't so handle any things. of these anymore <laughs> <laughs> but it's like in our business people are like oh we should be emailing more and i'm like i'm emailing on Monday. That's it. Okay. Like, See, enough enough there's Monday. contests in there. I'm definitely open the email. I mean, not to say and that I haven't opened once your a emails. month. There's a client specific one. So like there's one that goes out to a whole newsletter and we try to keep those informative. And then there, there's once a week we send one to just like people who train at trilogy. Okay. So Got there are once a month, I should say. So we, okay. cause it's the same thing. Like we try to not overwhelm people cause I've unsubscribed from so many things. Yeah. You're like too much. I don't need to hear from you three times a day. Yeah. Or three times a week, even like this is plenty. So if somebody, so it's really hard to balance. Yeah. If somebody comes in for me, first workout's free. And then was it three workouts for how much? $39. $39. So I'm going to give it a little, a little try. Okay, cool. And then what's your website? Trilogyfitnesssystems.com. Okay, cool. Anything else you want to like pimp, promote? Go for it. Oh, if you're in Cincinnati in August 27th, we're doing pounds and pancakes. It's been out for like two years, so it's finally come back, and it's the fifth year we've done it. Uh, we get a few, a couple local chefs that make uh, pancakes, and we do a little mimosa party. We have a workout, and this year we're uh, raising money for uh, the lymphoma and leukemia and lymphoma society for their light the night walk. Um, one of our members, Alicia, is a two-time survivor of uh, oh shit. I'm terrible. I forget which which version of it was, but two time survivor. Uh, she's like chair of the walk this year. Cool. So we're gonna use this to try to help her hit some of her fundraising goals. Oh, that's so awesome. See, you guys do such we'll good things. We talk on Instagram, we post it out. So like pounds and pancakes, if you want a, a little sampling of trilogy, is a my favorite thing that we do. It's like it encompasses all the things I love about trilogy. Yeah, awesome. Well, I'll do some pimping out of that for oh, you. Yeah. Thank Instagram. you. Cool. Well, uh, always such an awesome, awesome time having a conversation with you. So, um, obviously you're welcome back and I'm sure you will be back soon. No Thank pressure, you. but I'll I'm just telling you always what you're doing be now. here for you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, man. <Matt. laughs> Thank you. AmandaValentineBites.com.